I was actually going to kick off the show with this, but how do you think they're going to go next year? They'll win the comp. Yeah, no, they'll win the comp. They're going to win 2024. Nope. This trend that Winston Neville started, put your house on the Bulldogs in 2024, is all over my bloody social media. From Instagram, to TikTok, to YouTube, to Facebook, it's even found its way into my bloody MySpace. And while it's great to see such a passionate fan base having the most fun, dare I say, in about a decade, I am not believing for a second that the Bulldogs have any chance of winning a premiership in 2024. I know everyone loves patterns, stats, to joke around and everything, and full respect to Bulldogs fans for believing in your team, but I'm the guy who needs you to click on this YouTube video, so I'm going to give you a clickbait title for you to click on. And I am not believing for a second the Bulldogs have any chance to win this competition. For the past six to seven years, I have made a predictions video, I have thrown up some stats, and I have never ever put the Bulldogs in the top bait. And every single year, it's the thing I get commented the most, why am I not putting the Bulldogs in my top eight? And the thing with me is at this point, until I see it, I am not going to believe in it. I did believe at the time that Cameron Serrato was the right coach. I do believe the recruitment decisions, while they are just creating another Penrith Panthers team, has been quite good. I believe the direction Gus Gould is going is very Penrith Panther-like. And to be honest, Bulldogs fans, you have all the right to be excited. And there's no doubt in my mind that at one point, whether it's going to take another five years, heck, even if it's going to take another decade, that you guys are going to be up there and you're going to win a premiership. I believe you'll win a premiership before a lot of the current teams in the NRL. I believe in your future and I can see the direction you're going in, which, like I just said, I do not believe the case to be for most NRL teams. But when it comes to 2024, when it comes to this season, you just don't have the cattle and I do not believe it until I see it. It's not the worst team in the competition, but definitely... Dare I say, it's still a very far away from the top eight. I predicted them to come third last, and I can see a world where maybe they are in the bottom two again. I know Stephen Crichton. He is, in my opinion, the best brother dogs have made so far. Kiki had not play much last year. They were ruined by injuries last year. But when you look just at the roster and the fact that I still am yet to see Cameron Sorella have any real impact on these plays outside Jacob Preston, who we all know is going to be a state of origin player one day, I can name you at the moment 10 to 12 teams who are more of a chance of making finals, let alone of winning a premiership. At their absolute peak, I do not see the Bulldogs finishing anywhere near finals. Finals footy, unless some of those teams in the top eight or fighting in the top eight that I am predicting have really terrible and disappointing seasons. There's just so many questions with this Bulldogs team. And the Bulldogs, shout out to their fan base. They're the reason I'm making this money video because I'm sick to death of seeing it everywhere. And maybe it is tongue in cheek, but heck, when you're buying billboards, you gotta believe down there somewhere. But their spine still has many question marks. Their back five is pretty decent, but it's still nowhere near the top level of the competition. Their forward pack is a big question mark. I think the back row is probably the strongest point in this team between a back row of Josh Curran, Jacob Preston, Viliami Kikau, Jermaine Salmon fighting for a spot in there. I think there is a lot to like about some of these young players at the Bulldogs. I think there's a lot to like about some of the recruitment decisions they have made. But when you've got a team of fringe NRL players who even at their very best, are only going to be placeholders until you get someone better in that position. I love Drew Hutchinson, and I really rate Toby Sexton. I think Sexton should be partnering Burton in the halves if it was up to me. But there is no doubt that neither of those two is going to be the long-term halfback. And if anything has been proven to us in the past few years is that if you don't have an out-and-out superstar halfback, then you are going to struggle in this competition. Just look at the Sydney Roosters last year who had Drew Hutchinson in there, who had Sandon Smith in there. Until Sam Walker came back, we never got to saw the Sydney Roosters at their best. The Brisbane Broncos team right now isn't too dissimilar to the same side that won the wooden spoon. I know these players have grown up, but it's been under Adam Reynolds who has let them flourish. The same with the Cowboys with Chad Townsend. 
Tom Dearden was seen by many people as an NRL player who was never going to live up to his potential. But as soon as they got Chad Townsend, who has never been a top-tier halfback, but a guy who had a really good season and just did a job for the Cowboys, we saw Tom Dearden go out and have one of the best State of Origin debuts of all time. And it'd be different if Drew Hutchinson, who I really rate, was partnering a good number six. And Matt Burton, I do believe, can be a number six at one point in time down the line. Could be a 5-8 that wins you a premiership. But right now... Now, I am actually starting to believe that maybe he is going to be a center. Now, I do think that right now the Bulldogs need to keep him at 5'8". Even if he has another disappointing year, just keep him at 5'8 for the season. But I wouldn't rule out if I'm the Bulldogs, if a number six is coming through or there's one on the market... I wouldn't be out there trying to buy him and moving Burton back into the centers. But in that back line is actually where the Bulldogs are the most stacked. Josh Adokar, I still believe, is probably a top elite winger. Stephen Crine's the best center in the world. Blake Taft's a good player. Blake Wilson, the young winger, is absolutely killing it at the back end of last year. And it'll take some time. Probably New South Wales Cup, but if Bronson Sherry can get back to his best, that is a back line who at one point in time is going to be good enough to help you contend for a premiership. But that fullback spot, you guys know this by now. If you've been watching the channel, if you're a first-time viewer, then let me tell you my opinion. Stephen Crine has to play fullback for these Bulldogs. I like Black Taff. I think he can be a great backup. I think he's a great utility for all the jokes. He is a great utility. Stephen Crine playing his best footy at fullback will be the number one attacking weapon in this footy side. If they put Stephen Crine at the centers and the Bulldogs are the same team that we've seen for the past two or three years, then you will be wasting your best player at the center spot, especially if they stick him on right center, which by all tents and purposes feels like is what they're going to do. Unless Matt Byrne and Drew Hutchinson come out and both have career years partnering each other. And look, I'm not going to rule it out because you can't rule out anything in rugby league. But if they don't have career years and you stick Stephen Crine at right center, then you're going to be wasting your best attacking weapon. Dare I say you're going to be wasting your best player. At one point, as a young, young, young player, up, Stephen Crichton was touted as going to be the future fullback for the Penrith Panthers over Dylan Edwards. And I know they hadn't won a competition by that point. Dylan Edwards hadn't gone on to have that incredible 2022 season. But for all intents and purposes, there is a world right now where Stephen Crichton is the future fullback for the Penrith Panthers. And that was before he was the gun that we know him as now. And yes, even if the Bulldogs aren't great and Crichton does have limited opportunities with the footy at centre, he can probably still produce something magical and he's going to be a great defensive player for the Bulldogs, which they've been lacking on the edges for a bloody long time now. And Blake Taft did do a great job in 2021 as the fullback for the South Sydney Rabbitohs, but that was in a team with Cameron Murray, Cody Walker, Damian Cook. And outside of Stephen Crine, there's no one at the Bulldogs who is currently on that level. Not to say that they won't get there, but currently on that level. There is a reason why South Sydney continue to play Latrell at fullback. There is a reason, despite all these fucking injuries, that Manly played Tommy Turbo at fullback. I know he flirted with it last year, but there's a reason the Hammer is the fullback for the Dolphins. Because as good as these guys are at centers, when they're not surrounded by elite players in rep football arenas, they need to get their hands on the footy and they need to be the focal attacking weapon on this footy team. So do not waste Stephen Crying at the centers. Love Blake Taff. I also think Connor Tracy might be a viable option. I think Connor Tracy's above Blake Taff in the pecking order. But for some reason, doggies want to stay there. And if it works out, come call me an idiot. I've been an idiot before. And I know it's probably just tongue in cheek, but if you think I'm putting my house on the Bulldogs in 2024, then you mustn't know how expensive real estate is here in Sydney. But ladies and gentlemen, Bulldogs fans, let me know in that comment section why I'm wrong. Do you guys believe that the Bulldogs are any chance of winning a premiership or contending for finals in 2024. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.